there is a critter that is back at the Ponderosa, and I'm not happy about it. Whoa. Holy smokes. You guys just missed that. Big Joe, Big Joe, you've been getting in the cedars. He's been whipping up some cedar trees, I see. Jeez, big boy. Hey, man. Hey, guys, the Bakers with Cross Timber Bison, we are back. It's actually, there's no, the rest of the family's not with me right now. I want to thank Skylight for our sponsor today. Yeah, Peach is right here. You got Big Joe getting into my deer block pushing people around he's like get out of here he's been playing in the cedar trees but yeah you, look at that Whoa. holy smokes you guys just missed that but the 11 cal just ran my back end <laughs> holy smokes you scared the crap out of me maya what are you doing so close to me yeah Girl, I saw you got out, and I was wondering what you were doing. The 11 cal is not one that you mess with. Jeez, that's never happened. Well, the first thing I thought is when you got out, my I was like, uh, you might want in, but I wasn't sure if you had to pee or what. But this is a huge Texas cow mama. This is Texas 11. She's a big old cow. She's about the size of our other cow. Um, the one that lost her baby this summer we had to try to pull out of and we've saved that cow maya jeez girl yeah she's giving you the stink eye big joe's looking for oh there's a block back there i have out for i brought for the deer and big joe's found it he's gonna bust it open I bought a block for y'all today. It's okay. Hello, calves. These calves are getting so big. So big. Except that one. It's just a little guy. Little girl. And the 32 mom's doing great. Ma and I here are doing a herd check. Well, we got some things to uh, cover. 32 cal and calf is doing awesome. And a little heifer, I think, almost 100% sure. We're, this is the closest we've ever been to the little heifer. All good. These calves are getting so big. So these calves, you can see, I'm pretty pleased with how big some of these calves are. And I'm really anxious to see what the weight is on them. As I'm, I think these may be some of the biggest calves we've had. Um, just by looking at them, we should be in the 350 range. I hope if we can do that, I'd be happy with that. Um, I know in other places, some calves are 400. Some can even be 450. Those are pretty big sized calves. Uh, bigger is not always better, but um, I really like the way these calves look, and I hope that they've turned it on pretty good. And they got good mamas. And golly, Big Joe. Hey. Oh my. Jeez, you destroyed it and other stuff. Golly, we gotta go. Some of them have a little bit of red on them left. So these guys, that one's ready for weaning. This one is ready to be weaned. These fellas right here. These that were born a little late, still red, probably not ready to be weaned at all. Look at this hoss right here. This is the jumper. No, that's a Peter Cole heifer. That's her bull. He's a pretty good sized little bull. Looks like he needs to poop. 
We're going to give them a little room. They're probably going to run with us. All right, before we run off in the pasture too far, I want to show you the gift that Marissa and I have, and we want to share it with you. You guys take a look. The first thing I thought of when I opened up our skylight frame was my mom and my grandmothers. With the holidays right around the corner, this is a perfect gift for those mothers and grandmothers. Grandparents want to see their grandchildren. If you're sending a gift, you can actually preload your favorite photos without ever unboxing the skylight frame. As soon as they unbox the frame, they plug in their new device, they'll be welcomed with all these awesome memories ready for immediate enjoyment of all the wonderful pictures that you've uploaded. Whether it's a recent family trip or hanging out with your friends, this is a great way to surprise mom or grandma with a frame full of family photos ready to enjoy. This is a touchscreen display which is super handy. You can swipe through the pictures. You can easily pinch, crop, you can zoom, get the image however you want it on the picture frame. After you set your frame up, whichever direction or display that you want it, it's easy. Connect to the Wi-Fi, send the photos by the app or an email and invite friends and family to share those photos as well. Skylight Frame is the perfect gift for yourself or for loved ones. Go to skylightframe.com backslash bison and use my code bison or scan the qr code right here for 15 percent off who doesn't want pictures of their grandkids loved ones or bison look who it is look who it is it's our princess eleanor hey girl what are you doing eleanor hey girl We're gonna go check this camera. What are you doing? So I'm really anxious to see what's on our camera. I had this camera set up before we got some of this rain and we let the bison in our nine acres here, but I always do video. So I'm really anxious to share with you what this is. I'm gonna turn it off for now. Maya, I would stay in there. Stay. sounds going on right now they're all following me over here to the nine acre paddock getting in the water I see it's not even hot well I guess it is it's 82 degrees today which last week we had a frost which is nuts but everybody's coming over here now but I'm really anxious to see excuse me peaches what's on the camera because i've been seeing some signs of something that i've got to show you guys what uh, has been that has come back to the property and it's been a long time since we've had them but uh there's a critter that is back at the ponderosa and i'm not happy about it Actually been on this pond dam with the bison before. This is the pond we cleaned out last year too. 
need a little bit more rainfall and the sucker would fill up. It'd be nice. Well, since I was over here coming through, this is the nine acres where I just left, but basically wanted to come in here and see this, what this whole thing looked like. This is where the Haas and Dunbar herd got out, was right here. Um, now, it didn't look like this before. Since then, we we're about to take on a huge project. So we're actually in the burn unit right now. And the bison were only in here twice this year. And so uh, this pasture is sort of protected. We can only really graze it twice a year um, with some contract stuff we have going. So this is a new fence. And then we just patched it up here after... The bison got out, whatever. All good, we had the panels across there. Then it flooded, high waters got all the way up here and rushed it out, okay? Push the panels here, you can see. We come down here, we try to burn some of it. And before we started this new project, I said, we need to get this tree out of here. Huge tree. It's obviously was leaning like this all the way across. I said, well, we're not gonna go ahead, we're not gonna start this project Okay, until we get this tree out of here. Well, I came down here and cut it with my chainsaw. Uh, since then, the bison have not been in here. Uh, that herd has been in the hay meadow. We've got to move them eventually from the hay meadow, which is what you're going to see next. I was in that video last time. I was in the hay meadow with Dunbar and Haas and those females. They've got to move from the hay meadow and cut through the burn unit and end up over here. And moved all the way to the front. The Big Joe herd's going all the way to the front, which is the herd that we just saw. So this tree was leaning way over, and we come down here and I cut it off there with the chainsaw. And then when we cut it off here at the chainsaw, now we need to get the skid steer, come through here, grapple this up, move it, grapple that up, and move it as well. Then we can do something permanent across here. This is such a great creek. We have some ideas on what we're gonna do here, but we're gonna set another pipe right there and go across right we're gonna continue some actual nice fence and the animals won't be in this paddock until um it's gonna be a while it's actually next spring is when the next time they'll be in here so in the meantime we've got some projects to obviously take on this winter and one is a permanent creek sort of fencing not sure what to call it but we have some ideas and some of you have shared some with me and we appreciate it uh, on things that you can do basically to keep so that the water can go and sway underneath and the debris can sway underneath instead of shoving your panels way back here and destroying your um, creek crossing where your fences are running across. So lots of ideas to do here, but something else that we're doing, which is really cool. I'm excited about this is a riparian zone. Just walking these through here. Uh, working with some local groups here in the Murray County area. And uh, this is a riparian zone. So one of the things that we're going to look at doing is protecting this area. So when the animals come in here to graze, obviously they're not going to spend a lot of time in here, right? So what we're going to do is actually, there's going to be two things. That is going to be really avoidable, that creek uh, fence crossing, because what we're going to do is actually block off this whole riparian zone and protect it and here's why here's a perfect reason you see all that that's erosion over time now most of that was here before we got here and so what we can do instead of letting the bison you see the tire left here what we can do with the instead of letting the bison come through here and trample the sides coming down to get water you can protect these areas right so that your bank is not slowly washing away, which is happening here. If you've got cattle and a bunch of livestock running down here, right, in these areas, it's gonna slowly erode the bank. And when it rains, it's just gonna wash out, basically. And so we can try to protect this area, let the vegetation grow, maybe bring some goats in here, I don't know. You can bring goats in here in the spring and they'll eat a bunch of the shrubby stuff. Okay, they'll eat a lot of these forbs. They'll eat some of the green briar that's growing in here. Uh, they can eat some of the trees that they can reach. Um, obviously, a lot of the leaves are falling down. The leaves are 
the trees are changing colors right now. It's really pretty. But uh, we may can get some goats in here and do that and graze these riparian zones. And they have water. But we can keep out bison from messing up the bank and causing more erosion and save. And which what's that creates? Number one, cleaner water. That's the number one thing. We're trying to keep the erosion down and it keeps your water clean, which is what we want. In case some of you were wanting to know what this tree is, it is, oh, looky here. Looky there. A native pecan, oh, right above me. I see you, big pecans. We have so many pecan trees, we love it. We may do something with these guys. What do you guys think if we had some pecan products? So, this is a cottonwood. It was a huge cottonwood. And I love that right there. I want to take that and do something with it. There's no sawmills really around here, but I'm going to keep this. And if I keep it down here in the water, it'll be protected. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I want to save this somehow and get a slab out of it. I think it'd be really cool. That's a big piece of wood. I don't know if you guys can really tell, but it's about 24 inches on diameter, maybe more. It's a big tree but I want to save that and do something with it. No, you can't come over here, Peaches. All right, we got our block dropped off. Big Joe already did a little bit of damage on it, but deer won't care. They're happy. Go back to the bison. Show you guys what I was talking about. New critter has showed up at the Ponderosa. All right. It's been a long time, but you guys take a look at this. I had some hay spread out. guys let me know what you think this is it's got all this hay knocked up and you tell me what critter this is I think we got hogs. Big Joe. Hey, buddy. Come on, Big Joe. Here he comes. Something I'm uh, super excited about. We're all pumped up. It's that time of the year. We've pushed back working these guys, rounding them up. This is the latest we've ever done it. And one of the reasons I, I'm doing this is because, oh, see that cedar? <laughs> one of the reasons that we've pushed the roundup back some is because we had so many calves late this year. And so what I mean by that is, I think we had one in May, couple in June, but really late. So like July. And um, so my point is, I kind of pushed it back a little bit. I wanted those calves to stay on mama, to stay on mama a little bit longer is really what I wanted. And I know I've mentioned it a couple of times or maybe in my last video, but I'm so excited about what we're gonna do this time. I'm having some friends come over and it has kind of to do a connection with Cora if that tells you anything. But we're gonna do some roundup a little bit different this time with this guy and Dunbar and the Hoss Herd. But I told you my challenge my challenge is we've got to go from the hay meta through the burn unit, which is 80 acres. Got to cut through it, cross the creek, and end up right here in the nine acres, which is where Big Joe's hanging out currently. And then Marissa and I in the morning are going to take this herd and move them into pasture one. And so what that does is if we can get the Dunbar or Hoss herd and those females 
into the nine acre paddock. And so with that, then we've got some work to do. We've got to get, we've got to get Big Joe pinned up if we want to get Haas and Dunbar up to the front because we don't want Dunbar and this guy to uh, get nose to nose. That's uh, our challenge is up ahead. And so I'm nervous about it. I feel like we're about to work our animals. I think Big Joe's ready to rotate. That's what he wants to do. One of my favorite times of the year is right now. All the leaves are shedding, but uh, most of all, we're so blessed with the view of this property and how the landscape is. But um, we get the beautiful sunsets in the fall and uh, you can see the Arbuckle Mountains. And uh, it's just one of my favorite times of the year. And it's uh, something we like to share with you guys as the sun sets. And so as uh, it starts getting more into winter, skyline gets, gets more orange and uh, we'll share that stuff with you. But anyways, uh, Hope you guys are excited for the roundup. What a process it'll be getting all the animals situated and then ready for a working, which is gonna be December 2nd is where we bring all the animals actually up. We'll get them in the pens, we'll sort them. Doc Parsons will bring his hydraulic squeeze chute over and I'll have my help and my wife, Marissa will be there with me along with some of our friends and family, Kevin that will be there helping us getting all the animals taken care of. So also want to thank Skylap Frame for sponsoring today's video. Guys, you can scan the QR code or go to the link in the description. What an awesome gift for the holidays. Great for family, grandmothers, mothers, anybody, or just pictures of your bison for guests to see when they come to your home, wherever it may be. Love showing pictures of the bison. That's an easy way to do it. See you guys soon. Thank you guys for watching.